Uh, hey everyone, uh, I'm Angus I'm from Labour for a Green New Deal. For those of you who don't know, uh, we're a grassroots uh, campaign group within the Labour Party. Uh, we're not formally uh, affiliated with the Labour Party, we're just a, a campaign of Labour Party members and trade unionists. Um, some of you, or well, most of you probably have heard about the Green New Deal, uh, possibly even of our campaign. I think the first thing to say is that there are so there are lots of Green New Deals, uh, it can mean lots of different things, that's I'm sure one of the things we'll be discussing later today. Um, for us it's a massive programme of investment and democratisation, uh, decarbonising the economy within, the t uh, within 10 years, while building uh, a new eco-socialist economy uh, run by uh, and for the many uh, under a Labour government uh, powered by uh, a mass movement. As uh, a very good view, article in Viewpoint by Theria Frankos, the uh, American Marxist, uh, said not too long ago, the Green New Deal is a, it's a battlefield, it's a site of contestation, uh, which is open to co-option and open for me to emancipation. Uh, we have a, kind of a few key principles for us that guide us uh, away from, uh, from the, rock, uh, the rocky shore of the state uh, and towards the sunlit uh, uplands of socialism. Uh, which are, yeah, it's going to be great. Um, which are, uh, first and foremost, democratic ownership of the economy, expanding it far beyond uh, what it currently is, far beyond even uh, Labour's uh, ambitions under Jeremy Corbyn and Rebecca Long Bailey, as um, ambitious and welcome as they are, including the provision of universal uh, services, which God's talk about shortly. Uh, having a society of public luxury uh, and maybe private sufficiency, but I don't like saying private sufficiency, so I'll just say public luxury. Uh, and finally, of uh, internationalism and the awareness of the inherent tendency towards uh, co-option um, and of um, uh, the political economy of the nation states uh, taking us away from reparations for Britain's role in climate colonialism, uh, which we maintain this internationalist grounding through uh, transfers of finance, technology, uh, a strong anti-borders stance uh, and a transformation of the international political and economic system. I was asked to answer two questions um, when speaking, which are, one, if, uh, slightly provocatively, uh, if capitalist states serve the interests of capital, uh, can they be tools of radical decarbonisation, uh, as our campaign obviously uh, intends for them to be? Um, I would uh, not to be too much of an uh, undergraduate dickhead uh, about it, but um, I, I challenge the terms of the question, uh, perhaps in saying I challenge the slightly monolithic view of the state that's presented there. Um, for us, democratic ownership is the only way, uh, as Hazel just mentioned, to decarbonise uh, on the scale required. I don't think I need to convince anyone in the room today uh, that the free market uh, sure as hell uh, isn't going to do it, although I had a good go in City AM and trying to convince their readership um, of that case. Um, only by mobilising the full resources of the, resources of the state across a uh, mass programme of uh, retrofitting across uh, public ownership and massive expansion uh, of public transport, for example, and provision of free uh, public transport, uh, can we hope to kind of achieve the scale of decarbonisation uh, required uh, on, the, on the pace of it? That said, there's an intrinsic tendency, obviously, towards uh, uh, a new imperialism, a new uh, extractivism, as uh, Assad and others were mentioning. Uh, earlier, and indeed, as we said just this week, uh, towards the exploitation, uh, immiseration, and indeed uh, murder of migrants, which is why our Green New Deal uh, is explicitly, uh, and needs to be even more so, uh, pro migrant and anti border. We need to uh, extend free movement, and as our campaign says, have a right to move and a right to stay uh, across the world. So we're actively supporting measures to prevent people just being displaced from their homes, while also welcoming uh, those who are and supporting them. Uh, with 10 years now to go, there is no time for alternative, uh, particularly. Uh, I don't think everyone needs to uh, abandon, uh, in fact I don't want anyone to abandon extra parliamentary struggle, but patently there is uh, no uh, immediate revolution on the horizon, much as uh, we may seek it. Uh, the emancipatory potential of Corbynism uh, offers by far, by far the best avenue towards the rapid decarbonisation and transformation uh, of our economy and a basis for uh, much more ambitious programmes beyond. Uh, the second question I was asked was, uh, how can programmes of sharply curtailed energy resource be used uh, to, uh, to gain, uh, be framed to gain uh, mass support? This is an argument that often comes up around uh, criticisms of green growth, particularly in relation to uh, the Green New Deal. The first point that we always make, and the first point that we make relentlessly within the campaign, is to come after the rich and the powerful, uh, to name the enemies, to name 
the, ruling, the ruling class uh, and the polluters, uh, as Labour is starting to do, although it's not yet doing uh, the same level as Bernie Sanders, for example, uh, in the US. Uh, we need to name the fossil fuel corporations as the, one, the ones overwhelmingly driving uh, the climate crisis and preventing uh, climate action. And we need to ban the private decadence uh, of the 1% uh, uh, private jets that are kind of like the, the nice total of that, um, which can neatly encapsulate the fact that uh, the rich uh, uh, have energy consumption far superior to the rest of us. I think we need to maintain that central grounding that we're not all equally responsible, nor indeed are all of our consumptions the same. Uh, the second is, um, I was speaking this summer at um, the gathering of Plan C, the kind of uh, small anarcho-communist group in the, uh, in the UK. Uh, they used to have a slogan, uh, everything for everyone, and I think now democratic socialism is uh, what's uh, bringing that back. Um, I stand, we stand firmly for a vision of uh, public luxury. Uh, too many socialists, I think, have uh, forgotten the larger economic system which is uh, driving the crisis and tending to uh, embrace, however um, unconsciously, a kind of eco-austerity. Uh, the Green New Deal with its universal services and universal provisioning offers uh, a bold new uh, universalism with its services, uh, anti-border and open to all, regardless of gender, migration or any other uh, status. Uh, we need to end austerity uh, and its logics with a program of a huge uh, investment providing an economy and a society uh, in which everyone uh, can and will flourish and is given the tools to do so. Uh, I think it's instructive, for example, to take one thing on car culture here, for example, as a uh, symbol of the individual uh, emission of the modern neoliberal uh, economy. Um, if we analyse the reason why people are using cars, well, we can look, for example, at the privatisation of uh, public space, we can look about who our uh, cities serve, for example. We can also look at the fact that under the Tories, since 2010, uh, bus, uh, uh, bus coverage across the country has been, for, been gutted in half. Um, uh, with uh, rail privatisation and uh, people with working class people increasingly priced out of cars. The solution to these things uh, is for every banning measure which uh, the Green Party or others might seek to, to implement, we offer one measure or indeed more of public luxury. If we're going to ban cars in city centres, for example, or ban domestic flights for um, uh, the majority of people, we need to do that alongside the provision of free public transport across the entirety of the country, uh, electrifying every single railroad that hasn't been, uh, and expanding it, and indeed giving com local communities control uh, uh, over their bus routes. Um, for the, and indeed, um, provision of, let's say, uh, fleets of community cars, uh, as Labour recently pledged to do. We need to offer a four-day week which can reduce uh, emissions while offering a really tangible, brighter future uh, at the same time. We need to do this in the spirit of democratisation. Uh, the campaign, for example, uh, has local groups all across the country helping to build out what a vision of uh, Green New Deal looks like for different areas. So we say, you know, there are a thousand uh, Green New, Green New Deal bloom. This is the way to, uh, uh, to win over uh, mass consent uh, to a radical program of decarbonisation which can enrich people's lives uh, at the same time. Uh, the Labour movement is committed to building them, um, and I'm sure all of you are as well.